Right, welcome back to part three of the Alpha Models 124 Ferrari 458 Special. So after polishing up the bodywork, we need to mask off and paint our window surround and the windscreen scuttle panel. So masked off with various Azu uh, 1mm and 25 tapes and then infilled with the Tamiya tape. Um, we're going to prime the inside of the window. So we've got some uh, Pro Scale paints black which we're just going to put a couple of coats down nice and thin so all this is for is to a uh paint the scuttle metal uh scuttle panel in like a matte color like it would be on the real car but more importantly i'd like to add a matte texture to where the windscreens and all the acetate are going to be glued i think it aids with the glue i think it helps it stick in place so for me that's the reason why i do that the headlights, I changed the colour from the super fine silver to the gun metal. Looking at real life references, it didn't look as bright. And of course, we've masked off carefully around the carbon decaling. And we're applying a couple of coats of Mr. Hobby Super Clear to all the parts with carbon fibre, um, which is the dashboard middle section, the door cards, the steering wheel I've hand painted, the clear, as to I have with the little binnacle in the centre console. Now, we also need to paint the wheel arches and some of the interior parts in a matte black. So, we've got some Vallejo model colour uh, black here, thin to a drop of water, a nice flat brush. We're going to paint all the wheel arches and the inner part of the windscreen surround as well, just very carefully. And of course, because this is a water based paint going over a 2K, it'll wipe right off if you put too much on or go a little bit over the edge. That's not a problem at all. Just take your time. Always enjoy this part of the build. It usually means I'm coming to the end. Um, and it's a nice final stage of the build. It's quite therapeutic going back to brushwork. I say this every time. And the Velo model colours, uh, thinner a drop of water. They brush paint absolutely beautiful. Really nice paints. And one of the only remaining water-based paints I used is this bottle of black paint. And there we go. Our flocked interior is done. We've got some photo etch. Uh, bits to add inside so we've got some floor mats we've got some floor uh, footrest bits we've got a little pad on the driver's uh, mat as well so this is all held in place with Tamiya craft bond just a few strategic drops to hold it in place same with the footrest as well not bad interior on this one uh, and it is quite visible as well being an open top car you can see quite a lot so we've got the accelerator pedal in. We've added our silver unpainted bit of PE on top to simulate the foot pedals. And the same with the brake as well. That is CA glued in place just because of the angle it needed gluing at. So it's some careful placing to get that right where we want it. And then we've got the kind of luggage um, straps i suppose we call them luggage pockets that go behind the driver and passenger seat so again a couple of dabs of the tamiya craft bond just to hold this in place and then some ca glue for our seats so nice contrasting color here with the clay leather and the napa black so just get that in place there's a little locator underneath just making sure i've got the right one of course, the seats are handed. Make sure you get them the correct way around. Look at your online references. And yeah, beautiful call this. This against the black bodywork, it's going to look amazing. It really is. There we go. There we go. There's our main interior tub done. Then got our steering wheel. Has the kind of airbag section. Added to it again with some uh, crap on from Tamiya. A little bit tricky to get this one in place, but it went in just fine. And then we've got the paddle shifter that goes behind as well, which is photo etch. So a little bit of the craft bond there. We can glue that onto the dashboard itself. Big fan of this craft bond stuff. It's very good. Where Sega is not quite needed, this will do the job. You can move things around for hours afterwards. It gives more than enough grip to glue things in place permanently. And if you mess anything up, if you get a little bit too much on, it'll literally wipe off with a moist cotton bud. 
again, one of our MSM Creations uh, bubble stickers for the center of the steering wheel. Really nice quality finish and touch for the steering wheel. Just push it on, push it home. The carbon looking good on the wheel. You can't see it very clearly there, but it is there. And there we go. Nice steering wheel, looking good. And then we've got some parts to apply to door cards. Now, not the best gloss work on the doors. Um, the resin's not the cleanest, and it does show through the gloss a little bit. Obviously, this isn't 2K, so it's not as thick. But from the angle you can see from up above, it looks perfectly fine. Now, this is the reason why we test fitted that dashboard in the first place before we even painted anything, was to make sure it would fit in fine now. So you need to do all three layers, one after each other. It won't fit in as a combined unit, or mine won't anyway. So the top piece in first, making sure it sits exactly where I want it to sit. You see all the locating lugs underneath where everything fits through. Then get the centerpiece, which has our carbon fiber on. A little bit out of shot, do apologize. I have zoomed in on the camera and not realized. And then we've got the bottom piece, which again, just slots in and slots into those locating holes. There we go, all comes together beautifully. Then we just add a little dab of sea eagle on the back of everything just to hold it all in place. So you can see that interior color now really pops against the uh, the gloss black. The Napa black looks great as well. So door cards, I normally say glue these in, but on this one, um, I was worried that I'd need a little bit of movement after I had the interior in. So I just put a generous amount of the craft bond on each one. And as you can see, even just with that small dollop, it's enough to hold it in place. It does have quite good grab capabilities. It's quite a thick PVA based glue out the tube. So it does grab things really well, more than enough here that I can get these door cards in place and the rear um, head surround of leather, knowing fully that I can move them around later should I require. So, yeah, say glue is permanent. You know, it's going to damage resin to get it off. This stuff, this is going to take quite a while to dry. So I know I can get everything in and then not have to worry about getting this tub in. This is a very tight fit, really tight fit on the body. And it kind of has to clip into that rear section of black leather we just put in. It's like a keyed piece. So it needs pushing fully home. And there we go. It's all in. And like I say, I know everything moves around so I can get it all centered properly, which I am doing. And there we go, looking good. Very happy with that interior. Just trying to get that piece to click in place. There we go. Beautiful, that clay leather looks fantastic against the black. And then we get the rear diffuser in place. A couple of dabs of CA glue. This thing clicks in place and almost holds itself, really. There we go. At this point, be careful of CA glue on the fingers. It's very easy to do. Now, I test fitted the undertray underneath. It doesn't fit the best. And I test fitted the drill bit against the screws as well. So this is the optimal size for it. So with the tray in place, as I always say, if you feel the resistance on the screw, stop screwing, take it out and re-drill the hole. Like I say, the tray doesn't fit the best at all. It really doesn't. It's a bit of a, it's a little bit short, but it is what it is, and very rarely do I pick any of my models up to look underneath anyway. Loads of grills for the exterior. Just follow the instructions. Hopefully, like I said earlier, you painted all your P the right way because I hadn't on two of these and had to repaint them. But we've got some of the craft bond in there just to hold these in place. The same on the back end. Once it's dry, if you get a moist cotton bud, pointy one, and just gently rub it over, it tends to grab any of the excess glue and pull it off. It's certainly far neater than using CA glue. Just make sure all the grills are fully home where you want them. If you're not happy, take it off. You can always reposition, put a bit more glue on. I think in this case, I put a little bit too much glue on. So I took it off, wiped it over, and popped it back in place. This is the great thing of the craft bond. You can take things back off. Headlights, a little generous dollop of the glue in there. And we can drop our headlight unit in. I have added a uh, black panel line wash to these as well to give them a little bit of depth. 
So pop it in place. You've got a cotton bud to wipe off any excess. Same with the other side. Now, start of the disappointing bit here. The uh, headlights, not great. Nor is the front screen. Yeah, pretty terrible fit. Um, yeah, a bit disappointing. But we'll get to those in a minute. There's a couple of grills either side of headlights as well that need to go in place. Again, a little drop of craft bond. And then we've got these grills to go around the back end, around the exhaust. Again, I just slightly bent them to shape. A little bit of craft bond to glue them in place. And we can pop in the rear lights at the bottom as well. A little bit of craft bond in there. Get them lined up. Give a little bit of push in place. There we go. They've previously been painted in Tamiya Clear Red X27. And then the headlights. So, yeah, these lenses don't fit very well. The kit did come with vac form lenses, but they are not shaped for the headlight at all. So you'd have to completely guess how to do it. I did offer this up to use as a template. It just wouldn't work because of the shape of the headlight. So I had to use these. So we're doing the old Sharpie trick around the edge to have the headlight kind of rubber seal. Uh, and then using some craft bond to glue this in place. Now, it fits, but it's not the best fit. And I had to keep pushing it down to get the glue to grab it to take some of the flex out of it. So a little bit of disappointment. These, they don't fit in great. Luckily, they're not too noticeable because they do fit. They just don't fit great, if that makes sense. So the crap on to hold these in. The crap on does kind of dry almost clear. You can't really see it at all. There we go. That's always in place. Not the best fit. I've had worse in the past, and at least they're quite clear as well. Didn't lick that at all. Wipe off any excess. And then we've got grills. Now, I purposely left these brass grills unpainted till the end because I had a feeling I was going to have to shape them. And I do. I had to bend them quite a bit to get them to fit. So a quick test fit on the back piece. And the same on the front as well. Like I say, we've got some little grills on the bottom here that need glued in place too. So we'll paint up those brass grills in the uh, Photo Edge Primer from Pro Scale, and then paint them in um, Mr. Surface of Black again. And then with some Craft Bond, again, we can glue them in place, get them where we want them, get the glue to bite and grab it, and then we can get a cotton bud and wipe off any excess glue. It wipes off the 2K so easily, just moisten the cotton bud. And it does the job perfectly. Just pushing the edges in. It's going to hold it for a little bit, let the glue grab it. Like I say, for PVA based glue, it comes out and also quite thick, and it does actually uh, grip things really well. So there we go, we line all that up. Like I say, just keep pushing it. The, the glue will grab, it just takes a little bit of time. This uh, grill actually fitted quite well. There we go. We've already glued the lights in. I missed this step out. For some reason, I didn't get it. They've just been painted in Tamiya X27, and then I painted inside in Vallejo Model Air Silver, and then just glued in place with the crap on. Nothing spectacular, really. And then the exhausts. These are turned metal. They came with the kit. A nice little touch. Just some crap on in there. Glued them in place. Once they're glued, we'll paint the insides of those black. And then we're on to our brake system. So be very, very careful here of making sure you get everything on the right side. So I've got my front wheels on the left, rear wheels on the right. I've got the applicable calipers and disc with each one. So I know which is which. And we're going to build them first. We've got the handbrake caliper to stick on the main uh, rear caliper. They stick on top of each other. And then with that glued into the hub, the way it should be, is a little recess for it to sit. We can have some Bob Smith's gold and get our disc glued in place. Now, I'm using the Bob Smith's gold so I get a little bit of time to move things around. So I'm going to pop it into the caliper, pop it onto the hub. And then we're going to test fit the hub to the car. Again, be careful of seeing on the finger on your fingers. I've got the hub the wrong way around here, which I'm going to figure out in a minute after I drop it and break it all.
There we go. We've assembled. We can pop the wheel on. Just to make sure everything fits properly. And then get it on the correct side. We can test fit. Don't commit to any glue to you test fitted everything here. Um, and then get some CA glue. Once we're test fitted, make sure it sits right. You got the right side. Confirm you got the right side as well. We can glue it in place the right way. So the hubs are angled for the way they locate. And obviously the calipers go a specific way. All we need to make sure now is that the ride height's correct and that the wheel is true, that it's straight and where it should be. There we go, it fell off. Showing all my trials and tribulations here. The glue does take a while to grab. But there we go. And then we need to repeat those on the others as well. Now, on the rear left or right, I forget which one it is, rear left as if you're driving, um, the hub sat uh, too low and made the ride height too high. So what I'm doing here is sanding the very top of the hub so that it sits in place a little bit lower. So a few sands with the UMP white 180 sander using the wheel and the hub to test fit. I'll just keep sanding that until I'm happy with the height. Because sanding the top of the hub brings the this, the wheel closer to the body. Once I'm happy with it, like that, we can glue it in place. So again, test fit everything. Test all the ride height. Make sure that it's all equal all the way around. There we go, hold it for a second or two. We've got the ride high perfect. And then we can build our front hubs. Now, nice of Alpha Models here to supply two of the left hubs. So I had to cut one and kind of bodge it together myself. So there's no locating point for the uh, brake caliper. I've had to do it by eye and line it all up straight. So basically, they gave me the wrong handed uh, hub on one side. But luckily, a little bit of bodgery. Just a little bit of CA glue, basically, to hold it in place. We can get it in place. Make sure the ride height's good, which it is. Yeah, it's equal to the other side. And I did make sure I did mix up the other side as well. And I didn't. They give two of the wrong uh, one of the wrong hubs for this side. Once we're happy, we can CA glue it in place. And that is all four wheels done. Now, it didn't sit totally true. When it's on four wheels, it did rock a little bit. Um, but judging by the kit and the way things have gone together, it's just the way it is with this, I think. Um, the ride height is perfect all the way around. It sits equal on every wheel. The gap in the arch is exactly the same for each one. I've made sure of that. But, yeah, it's just one of those things. A little bit of a layer model colour black on the inside of the exhausts. So a quick swirl around with a micro brush. It's still a bit loose because it's got the crap bond in it. And then we get a cotton bud. And just wipe off any excess. Like I say, these are turned aluminium exhausts. They look really, really good. There we go. Now, the worst part about this kit, the screens, is a vac form screen that comes with the kit that has no black surround. So I opted not to use that. And you get two windscreens i'm not sure why but you do get two so we've test fitted it it looked as though it fitted okay uh but as soon as you get glue in place this is bob smith's gold black top glue here uh the screen just didn't want to fit and what i've made into five minutes here was probably about 30 minutes of swearing and frustration <laughs> as things just would not fit i finally got it in place with some jiggery pokery but yes, it was a little bit of a nightmare to get this in place. So yeah, we'll put a generous amount of CA glue. Not too much though. Then we're going to spread it out just a little bit. We get our screen off the back end. As you can see, I've already wrecked one screen. This is the second screen. It just doesn't fit properly. The screen is just a bit odd shaped. Um, this could be from me reshaping it earlier. I'm more than likely going to guess it's a fault from when it was made. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a tricky one to do. Probably one of the worst screens I've done on this car. Thankfully, there's just one piece of glass. So it's a case of getting 
everything lined up. Spread out any large dollops of CA glue so it doesn't squeeze out the edge of the screen. We use our masking tape trick to be able to hold the screen. Line one corner up, line the other corner up, and then try and hold it for a bit. Uh, it's quite a convex screen, so it was a bit tricky to do. So you're better off holding it with your fingers for a little bit, and then getting some cotton buds, and just keep rubbing down the edges until the glue takes hold. So like I say, a tricky one to do this, very frustrating. Uh, Andy Q, uh, Andy Quiney, as I figured out his name is, uh, was in the hangout with me, and he said he's never heard me swear so much, and I was like, oof. Yes, the air was a little bit blue with this because it was like, I'm going to ruin this. And then this is the stickiest tape I've ever had on one of these screens. It had to be, didn't it? It actually pulled the edge up of one of the corners. I had to re-glue it. And uh, yeah, ridiculously sticky. But yeah, other than a few little glue marks and yeah, a few little bits and bobs, it went on in the end okay. And again, a little of our MSN creation bubble stickers. Do the Ferrari logo on the front. Get that straightened up and in place. They make a huge difference to these things. They are well worth having. And then the Ferrari badges for the side as well. And this is why I did the yellow calipers. Because we've got these yellow bits of trim. That I think they kind of bounce off. Now I did opt for doing um, yellow seat belts on the interior. But they just looked a bit odd. So we'll go with black in a bit. I'll show those going in in a little bit. But I think these little finishing touches with these badges. These look absolutely fantastic. And this is why I left the decals off, because these look so much better. One on that side, one on the other. Like I say, it's a good contrast against the brake calipers. Yeah, really happy with that. They're looking good. And then the fry badge on the back. Now, this is another aftermarket one. Um, the one I picked was a bit big. So I got it in place and thought, ah, no, I'm not a fan of that. And then took it back off and put a smaller one on. So I'm showing me put the big one on. And then off camera, I'm going to take it off and put a slightly smaller one. It's just a little bit too big. When you've got like three or four different sizes, it's quite hard to judge which one you actually need. It was only when I put it on and thought, yeah, that's way too big. But this is how these work. These are like reverse decals. You cut off the, plate, uh, the clear plastic with them on. Pop it in place. And then peel off the back once it's all burnished down. And you end up with a nice metallic decal. There we go. And they are 3D effect. They look absolutely fantastic. Yeah, big difference to the kit decals. Although, to be fair, this did come with a metal badge for the back. I just think my MSM ones look better. And just give it a quick buffer up around. And there we go. Got a Ferrari logo on the front as well, just in that little air scoop at the front. So same type, just a smaller one. And then on to finishing touches. So a quick wipe over with a cloth, get any fingerprints off that screen. Absolutely paranoid about that screen popping back off, but thankfully it didn't. Black is one of the worst colours to keep fingerprints off, for sure. Uh, I'd literally hand lip it down, be covered in fingerprints, and wipe it off again. So, yeah, a little bit of a nightmare. Wing mirrors. Uh, got the wing mirror glass in, which is, again, the same kind of sticker as the rear Ferrari logo. So, a little bit of craft bond in those to line them up, get them sitting straight. A little bit tricky to do, but the craft bond, again, if you're getting it on the body, it wipes off, and you can move the mirror around to straighten it up as much as you want. There we go. And then the window wipers. The bane of my life. I hate these bloody things. Thankfully, they went on relatively uh, trouble-free. There we go. That's the second one in place. Yeah, like I say, thankfully they went on fairly trouble-free on this. But yeah, they are a pain to do. Seatbelts, all I've done is cut a small length of black ribbon, pop the seatbelt buckle on, some double-sided tape. I've cut the ribbon at an angle, so it goes through 
uh, the little slot at the back where the seatbelt will come through in reality. Like I said, I did up try these in yellow, but I think it was just too much. So I think black is the way to go. It had had like a tan colored seatbelt to match the leather. I would have gone with that, but alas, I didn't. So these, these are the buckles that come with the kit. So they just push off the back. We've got some two millimeter black ribbon. I'm just going to feed it through and then add uh, some double sided tape, cut it to size, bish bash bosh, job done. And again, it's just one of those little things that just you can see it if you look close. Uh, from a distance, you wouldn't notice it, but it's little details that sometimes add uh, the interest to vehicles like this. So get the buckle roughly where you want it, add the double sided tape to the back. There we go, we can then get our scissors. We've got our Fiskars embroidery scissors, which are fantastic for this. Angle the seatbelt the correct way. And then cut it to length. There we go, peel off the double-sided tape off the back, and then we can stick it in place where needed. So like I said, just a little touch you can see. So get it in place with the tweezers, and then gonna push it in with the cocktail stick, and a little bit tricky because they tend to stick to the tweezers. And then we can push it fully home, and there's our seatbelt done. Like I say, nice little touch. Just adds a bit of depth to the interior. And I have to say, that interior looks absolutely fantastic. We've got a great range of leather colors over a pro scale. Go on over and have a look. There we go. I think we've got about 20 on there now. We've got loads. That looks absolutely fantastic. And like I say, don't forget to take advantage of being a patron. You get early access on all the videos. You get an exclusive Saturday bench update, uh, as well as added to a Facebook Messenger chat. Uh, lots of perks. And obviously, being a patron, you help keep me being able to make do these videos. Final polish up is some UMP Shine Solution on our nice glasses microfiber cleaning cloth to get this beauty to shine. This black looks absolutely epic. She really does look phenomenal. Like I say, just be careful at this stage. You're not snagging window wipers, badges, lights, and what have you. Uh, just take your time working your way around here. That you're not knocking things off. It's easily done. I've got a glove on, as you can see, just so I don't smudge it again with my fingerprints. And yeah, this this is a beautiful car. Not the best kit, but as a build, it's turned out absolutely stunning. It really has. Like I said, the UMP Shine. Again, works really well. There we go. The tyres are a bit of a pain on the wheels. They can be a little bit slack, so they do move around. So if you're taking pictures, make sure you've got the wheels and tyres in the right position. Because they do tend to move around. But overall, like I say, the kit's had its faults. But it's gone together pretty well. More than happy with the paint colour. The Nero uh, Daytona colour absolutely amazing 2k's gone down absolutely fantastic polished up beautifully those wheels look absolutely astounding as does, as does the interior color yellow calipers i think they all complement each other nicely those msm creation badges are a worthy addition to have they do ferrari lamborghini porsche uh a few other manufacturers as well go over and have a look but doesn't she look lovely absolutely beautiful car and a great result as well. So there we go. All done. Like I say, go to ProScale Paints. We've got loads of paints on our website. Loads of interior colors, flocking, 2Ks, all sorts of stuff there. And we will custom make a color for you at no extra cost. Pop it on our website for you. For you and everybody else to buy. And there we go. Right, some pictures. I've got it on my, my uh, background here for you for a few shots. So, wonderful result, more than happy with this. It's not perfect, the kit's not perfect at all, but just all the colours complement each other fantastic on this thing. So this was primed in Pro Scale Grey Primer, it's painted in Pro Scale Daytona Nero Metallic, uh, we 2K'd it with Pro Scale 2K, the wheels are Pro Scale Raised Bronze, discs are Pro Scale Carbon Ceramic, the uh, calipers are Pro Scale Yellow Caliper, Interior is a combination of clay leather and Napa black leather from Pro Scale. 
along with the Pro Scale uh, Black Flocking. Um, we polished it all up with our Menzana compounds and uh, Autoglim Super Resin Polish on the rotary tool with the polishing pads. And what a great result. Like I say, not a perfect kit, but more than happy result on this. It's an absolutely stunning build. Okay, there we go. So, yes, a bit of a disappointing kit in places. There was a lot of flaws on that body. Um, it's one of, kit, it's one of uh, Alpha Models' earlier kits. It is, I admit that. It's like 005. I don't know what the first one was they did. But it's definitely rough and ready around the edges. Lots of flaws in the body. Lots of rough parts of resin. Lots of fit issues. Lots of wrong parts. Obviously, Alpha Models have learned from this because the newer kits are much better. The resin is finished to a much higher standard now. You can literally degrease the body and prime straight away on most of these. Uh, they're perfect. So I've got this, and I've got a 488 GTB, which is another older one, which has damage on it as well, funnily enough. Um, and yeah, so yeah, you do get spoiled by the newer ones, but this kit was well worth building because I think it's come out absolutely amazing. I think that gloss black paint with the clay leather interior, the bronze wheels, the yellow calipers, uh, it just looks phenomenal. It turned out really well. I'm very happy with this one. Um, Pro Scale 2K, getting in that extra 10% for the last clear coat is definitely a winner. And the powered, uh, obviously, the sponge compounds, uh, sponge compound, hang on, the compound sponge polishes, that's what I'm looking for, combined with Minza and a cut compounds, it just makes light work of polishing the body absolutely fantastic. So, there we go. First build of 2024 off the bench. Next up is the Torino. I'm going back to the full Torino I started to get that finished. The body's all painted on that. I've got all the running gear and interior cut off, ready to clean up tonight. Uh, we'll get that one off the bench. Then we're going back to the FXXK. Uh, and after that, I don't know. I've got so many builds I want to do. I've got all the time in the world and not enough time to build everything I want to. Yes. It's a tough life, isn't it? It is a first world problem to have. But yeah, I've got way too many nice kits that I want to build. And uh, yeah, that's it. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that build as much as I did. If you built the kit or if it's a kit you're after, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you're using those compound sponges I've been using as well. And if you find them useful or a pain or whatever. And if you've not tried them, give them a try. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Hopefully, I remember. If I don't ask me, and I'll pop it in there. Um, big game changer for me definitely something we'll continue going forward there we go as always you want to support the channel keep these videos going as well as getting some benefits for yourself you can become a patron of mine there's a link in the description below there's all different tiers you can join from £3.50 up to I don't know what the highest tier is like 80 or quid a year or a month wherever it is um, you get early access on all the videos a month's early access. You get exclusive Saturday bench update. Only patrons get. I do every single week. Uh, you can be added to a Facebook messenger chat group. There's like 80 of us in there. Great little community we've got in there. There's a Facebook group to join as well. You can request uh, reviews. Uh, you can request uh, how-tos, things like that. You can message me directly on Patreon too. You can get in touch. And with your support, I can keep doing these videos without your support. I couldn't keep doing this. So I owe a lot to my patrons for allowing me to do this as my day-to-day -day job. And of course, go check out ProScale Paints. We can get all of our wonderful paints and products from. The results are speaking for themselves. Uh, all these models here, every one of those there, uh, most of these here, uh, there's the Ferrari there. Most of these American ones on this shot, all been painted with ProScale. The results speak for themselves. The paints are absolutely fantastic and very, very forgiving as well. We post all over the world at a very reasonable postage rates, and we do requests on paint at no extra cost. And you've only got to order one bottle as well, not two big bottles, just one bottle at a normal £4 cost of a bottle of paint. Uh, there's links to everything else down there. There's Facebook. There's an email address to get in touch with me. There's UMP Retail. They offer hangout groups there as well. Uh, my stash is there should you want to go and have a look and there's links to all the products I use in all the videos There's an Amazon store you can buy stuff from and there's links over on the forum to basically everything I use in my video I need to update it but it is there and of course make sure you give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down whatever you want to do 
Click that bell notification to get notified of the latest videos. Make sure you sub to the channel and leave a comment. I do read every single comment and appreciate everyone takes the time to leave feedback. So thank you all very much. And most of all, thanks to my wonderful patrons whose name's going to flash on screen at the end of this video. There we go. Take it easy, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.